Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy Nutta Babbling Belgian and welcome back to XCOM 2. As you can see, I managed to uh, complete the mission, the dark, uh, the black side coordinates mission for the third time over the weekend. Um, I've did it, I've done it a, a lot more efficiently this time. Um, I'll show you a bit of the footage over me talking about this. Um, I killed the sector pod almost in one go with Banish this time. Uh, that made a ghost with Lena bring brought her all the way to the end of the mission while keeping Elena in shadow. And then I used Lena's copy, Lena's ghost, to amplify damage on the warlock. The warlock was stupid enough to hide himself right next to Heidi. Um, after which we decided to blow open the wall and rapid fire the warlock, killing him almost instantly. Um, but of course, Christina got a bit of the MVP award here as well, because she killed both the sector pod with a pistol shot, as the warlock and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, after that, I wanted to try if the mission actually crashed because everything was dead. So I left the pod with the um, Spectre and the two Archons on top of the building, while sneaking out Elena in shadow, keeping an eye on that pod. And then getting everybody out while we didn't even fight that last bolt and that last reinforcement batch. And that basically worked. So that's why we uh, are now down two more blocks of Avatar Project Progress, which is really, really good. And we can continue scanning what we were doing before, although I'm not 100% sure what we were exactly doing. I don't want an extra mission. I thought we were doing something else here. Oh yeah, the cave. I think we were doing the cave. Yeah, we... We definitely were doing the cave. There we go. There we go. The bolt cast to complete. Discovered among a cache of seemingly archaic weaponry. The bolt cast is deceptively powerful but limited by a slow rate of fire. Targeted enemies have a chance of being stunned on impact. And this weapon is unique. So I think we can use that to stun the um, alien rulers. Um, and from our last mission, by the way, we didn't get any uh, loot because I didn't get a drop this time. But we did get 200 more supplies. So as you can see, supplies are in, uh, well, large supply these days. And then we get the covert action probably completed. And that reduces the after project by two again. Which gives us a nice bit of rest on that front. So uh, covert action, that is then There we go. A little bit of a delay. Emily got another promotion, which is exactly what we wanted. And then, let's see. Let's assign a new covert action. What do we have? I think the loot is always interesting, so I think I'm just going to go with loot. So we can add a sergeant. Uh, might as well make that Hilde. Because Hilde is a specialist that needs a few more promotions if I want to have her on par with uh, Sarah and Kelly. And then a soldier who's increased in hacking. You know what? We might as well do that differently then. So let's put Jessica in there. And then Hilda in the hacking slot. So she gains a bit of hacking points. There we go. And begin action. Then we have Emily's promotion. Um, Emily is supposed to be... Yeah, I don't know why she's holding a rifle right now. Of course, yeah, the plasma rifle must be the, uh, the strongest um, weapon in her arsenal right now. Um, either Implacable, but I don't really use Implacable. Untouchable is more interesting. And Bladestorm, we can actually really abuse that. Because I think I even did that in the last run of that previous mission. I think I put... Um, there was one officer still alive. But I put Heidi right next to him with Implacable. Making him inf him flanked, which caused him to run away once he's, his turn started. But of course, since he was close enough, Bladestorm triggered and killed the officer in one go. So Bladestorm is, to my mind, invaluable. There we go. So now that the bolt cast is complete, I actually forgot to even... Is there anybody wounded? No. To move some of the engineers around a little bit. So if I take away the gremlin... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, right. We, um... We cleared out that last room, so I think I can put an engineer over here. I'm gonna keep that last room empty for now. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with it just yet. Uh, probably gonna be for the psionic soldiers, but we'll see that when we get to it. But, proving grounds. We have quite a few Illyrium cores. We have four left. Um, we could make one bit of experimental ammo just to see. Uh, might not be that bad, actually. 
One bit of experimental ammo. And we get Talon Rounds. So granting 20% critical chance and one bonus damage on critical hits. So very, very powerful on shotguns. And then I really want to try out one of these Spark units. Um, I'll go with one more powered weapon first. Uh, which is 8 days. And then I'll use the rest of the Illyrium cores on the Spark unit. There we go. And that's all our cores done. But we probably have more on the way with the covert action and then we get the storm gun i'm not exactly sure if that's going to be more powerful than the arashi the uh, assassin shotgun and we don't get any extra items from that so storm gun though so uh fires a concentrated set of beam beam pulses piercing and melting the target across a substantial surface area but technology breakthrough for improved vector rifles Improved factor rifle, Spectre Autopsy is instant. Aha, but data path decryption is also inspired. But this is a breakthrough, so that's not gonna come back. Uh, micro rifling applied to the Reaper's vector rifle barrels has increased damage output by one. But does that work on the later versions of the vector rifle as well? Because otherwise this is useless. I'm not going to risk it. Referred to by our troops in the field simply as a specter. It has so far been difficult to ascertain by what means this being is able to shift forms from a solid to gaseous state at will. I had theorized it could be a cloud of nano machines, or perhaps even an insect swarm. However, those theories have proven false while offering no new direction for my research. Okay, so it's not a nanobot swarm. Um, we get the refraction field. So, although I had convinced of a number of theories as to how this was taking place, it isn't immediately clear that any of these hypotheses are out of the realm of possibility. As of yet, we found no means of recovering one of these spectres in their assembled form, leaving little evidence as to their true composition. Hmm. That is interesting. And there might be a link with the codex. Refraction field. Using material recovered from the remains of the alien spectre refraction field technology will allow the equipped soldier to instantly enter concealment. However, the field can only be used in combat once and the device will be permanently removed from the soldier's inventory after activation. Permanently? Interesting. Interesting. Um, I'm gonna go with the easy thing now. We should probably go with the uh, data path decryption over here that gives us more intel next up, so... Your misbegotten engines of oh. war will abandon you. We lost one of our data paths. So the warlock actually took one of our data pads. And we get uh, 41 intel from the other data pads. So I assume that we might actually don't have any... Ooh, um, we could go for a facility lead, but I don't really need another facility lead. There's plenty of those on the map. Um, oh, we need to finish the Archon Autopsy if you want to do the Plasma Lance. So I think it's about time that we start looking at hmm, either the Beam Cannon or Psionics. The Beam Cannon probably gets us a something else. I'm pretty sure we get something else. Not 100% sure, but I think we get something else. So let's just go with the beam cannon. We don't need to do anything shadow chamber related just yet. Um, so we'll just continue scanning. And see what else we get from this. So that should get us... Strategic resource located. Quite a bit of alien alloys and alien crystals. Okay, that is very, very nice. We could get more power. Although I don't really need more power. So I think I need to start expanding expanding any recruits training in the gts will achieve the rank of sergeant immediately so that's already good but i need to put in one more tower over here to have the bonus uh here and that is yeah enemy units lose one action on their next turn if discovered on the xcom turn which is a cool bonus on one hand but on the other hand i mean putting radio towers down costs a hell of a lot of Tough. And this is completely useless because I don't have any laboratories, but I need to put that over here anyway. So let's build this finally. Setting course for Sector 6, Eastern Europe. Now we get that continent bonus and we can start moving towards Asia. So let's build the... Ooh, that's the maximum time, which is not that good, but 
Continue scanning, and there we go, Guerrilla Operation. That's where we wanted to go to, Lost. But we get an engineer, spider and fly. There's a risk of ambush on all covert actions. And it's just a Lost mission. Then, East Africa, bunch of supplies, Operation Blood Dragon, and encounters a hidden event, but it's just difficult. Doesn't seem that problematic either, because they're basic enemies. Um, and then we have... 106 intel, very difficult. Just because of the number of enemies, I think, because there's not really an elite enemy over there. But missed shots on that vent officers and priests will trigger return fire. That is really, really bad, by the way. East Africa would be nice because it counters the hidden event, but hidden events are usually later on. But advent return fire is really, really annoying. So I think I'm going to go with that, despite it being a very difficult mission. Setting course for sector 10. And even then, it doesn't look that difficult. It's just the amount of enemies, probably. I'm also going to check what we can now do with those supplies. So let's go to build items first. So I'm going to create the storm gun just to see what happens here. Um, the Templar beam pistol also seems nice, but I'm not going to take Lena on this mission, I think. So let's just grab the storm gun like that um and that still gives us 300 supplies which is really really nice i could go for the arc blades um so why not the 2060 supplies 10 alien alloys we have plenty of that so let's just finally drop by the arc blade as well and that's it for now i think let's set up the team so the arashi actually does the same amount of damage as the storm gun so it is definitely the superior weapon um which is kind of too bad same with the uh, the art blade actually does a lot less damage than the katana i'm not actually sure if there's a plasma variant of the blade uh, i guess we'll see later on so uh definitely giving emily those weapons so there we go as you might have noticed we are taking one of the squaddies so gertrude is our final squaddie that we haven't really used just yet i lost the customization i did at the beginning of the previous episode because of course the game crashed a few times so that's why i'm gonna do this at the end of this episode to start giving our ladies a bit more of a unique personality in a visual style as well but without further ado let's go on to operation spider shriek and destroy ourselves an alien relay oh i don't like sewers and i think i might have broken bradford again um yeah so if you're in the ship and you start the mission before Bradford is done talking. He actually just stays on on the screen. Which is stupid. Can can you go, Bradford? I'm gonna try to save an exit and see if that changes anything, because this is annoying. Ah, there we go. Restarted it and it looks a lot better. So let's see what we're dealing with here. There's like this side area up here. This looks a bit weird. Probably the entryway. Um, but it goes around as well. Keep in mind, we are dealing with 10 enemies, which means 3 to 4 pods. Probably more 4 than 3. Um, and the relay is over there, so it's not, not even that far. I'll try to stick to the left side of the area and move around as quietly as possible. And I think Elisabetta spotted something, yeah. A Spectre and Double Muton. That is fine. I'll just move everybody up and let the turn run out. So, let's see what these guys are going to do. So the Spectre is uh, moving through. There's a tram here. Mm hmm there's a train here which is interesting so this is supposed to be an, an old subway station i would assume so moved everybody very close to the train oh crap a doodle ding dong that's not what i wanted that's not what i wanted i'm gonna have to pull elisabetta back although okay so they move out of sight which is good because otherwise i needed to deal with two pots in one go and that's not something we really want to do. Although it seems that these guys didn't really want to move. Fine by me. Let's give them a little bit of shell shock. Um, so grenade into this, this, this train. Like, does that hit all of them? I think it does. Yes, it does. And I sh probably don't need that part of the train anymore. So let's just blow a hole into that area. 
because booms might be active and volatile mix is also active so that might be some serious damage there we go i see double critical so that's really really good so that one muton is almost dead i don't know what we're looking at the specter but through the muton's body they're gonna move up but i don't yeah that's that's fine i think we can deal with that rather rather nicely so first up i think we should go with sarah sarah can flank at least one of these yeah erica can only see the specter in the back there her shots with a pistol is just as much interesting let's just fire this shot first because it's the least uh accurate and we did get two extra damage because of the yeah, miss because of the stock then emily has run and gun now but i need to be careful because i know there's another bolt over there somewhere so if i go too close i might actually trigger that so let's first try and deal with those two mutons um so if i put gertrude or rookie over here she has oh damn she has a flank shot on this one muton which is still only 80 percent for some reason but there we go that's a kill first one down from an ambush which is really really good then i could put elisabetta here as well but i need to be careful so let's put sarah in a better position here first so let's let her flank the muton where apparently that barrel gives him full cover that doesn't seem right but there we go 100% shot in the face and that's from a flanking shot too. that also gives us an extra ability point now um let's see Elisabetta might get close enough for another flank shot but I think that Emily has the better position here so if we give her run and gun she can go over here I hope that doesn't trigger that other pole otherwise we're gonna be in bigger trouble Ooh, Nelly. we didn't trigger it it's not a flank shot per se but here we go there we go talon rounds increase the critical hit chance and damage so that's a critical in one go so let's move everybody up a little bit closer because we know who's coming i hope i didn't trigger anything with that no we didn't there we go overwatch and there we go, we spot the next batch. A priest, a mech, and what's a lancer? Yeah, a lancer. I think I saw something in the back there. For a second, I think I saw something else, but let's see. There's a few people too far away to do anything, sadly, unless I blow open a wall. Um... Jacqueline, can you open up the door here? Does that give Erica sight on some aliens as well? It does. 67 on that Lancer. Well, might as well try it, right? There we go. 67% chance. And we get a hit. So 6 damage on the Lancer already. Which is really, really good. Then we probably should go with, a, with some grenades. Because they're in a really bad position. There we go. They're in a really bad position. I can take care of most of the cover there. Should have probably done that first. But the biggest booms. If we get 7 damage on the uh, the Lancer. He's dead. Ah, just not. We did get an Overwatch removed. And shredding of basically every bit of armor. Commander, we have a positive ID on the alien relay. Okay. Gertrude can't really do anything except maybe aha she could skill mine the lancer if she wants to but first things first I have another I could either do the blaster bomb which would probably kill all of them can, can I kill all of them with that no hmm the mech isn't gonna die from that and the EMP bomb only does 10 damage as well um but this might actually be pretty overkill this is gonna be overkill so 76 66 s61 let's keep her last 
and see if we can't move anybody into a better position to get a shot off. Although it doesn't seem to look like it, we're in a pretty bad position here. Emily can go over here. Finally. And she might be able to shoot at... Yeah, there we go. On the Elite Priest. If we get a critical off here, that would be nice. There we go. Ah, he goes into stasis probably. That is not good. Okay. Then I think I'm just going to fire at the Lancer. Killing it. Hopefully. There we go. And then we'll see what we do with the mech in the next turn. Because I don't have another option. So the priest comes out of stasis. But he gets overwatched. And Sarah has pretty good aim. There we go. There we go. And we get loot from that. The mech comes a little bit closer, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to hit somebody. Oh no, yeah, grenades. So, our armor is shredded just a little bit. Ooh. And that's the next batch. Shouldn't be too bad. Seems like a, a purifier, a priest, and... Oh, that's it. No, 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 we're fine. Calm down, everybody. Um, we still have one more sniper shot. And it's on the Mac. Might as well do that. From all the way in the back. Blammo! Eight damage. And then I can probably use the blaster bomb now. I'm gonna move uh, Jacqueline just a little bit closer. I don't think anybody's on Overwatch. I could even go on to, yeah, this higher thing over here. Um, who else do we have? That's the blaster bomb. Elisabetta has the blaster bomb, so let's do that without trying to destroy the loot. So I think like this, we should get the loot and not blow it up. Although I should probably get that first, wait. No, I'm gonna have to risk it, because I can't really put anybody over there without risking uh, somebody's life. And I don't want to risk somebody's life with just a little bit of loot. Um, so let's hope that this doesn't destroy the loot. She's pointing it to the floor, but there we go. Mac is down, armor is shredded of that purifier, but he's still in full cover because that beam is indestructible. Um, next up, let's put... Huh. That is annoying, but let's put Emily over here. So she's at least in cover. And then we could either start firing at the objective, which I think I'm going to do, because I can't really hit either of those guys. Yeah, so let's just fire at the... Although, I could actually go into Overwatch. Jacqueline has a better overview of the area here. And I think she might actually be able to, because the... I don't think the priest is behind the metal beam, so I think I can actually remove the cover from the priest. So that might actually make our shots a bit easier. There we go. Cover removed, but oh no, we have that annoying bug again. Where the cover is removed, but for some reason it makes visibility even worse. Now, I might be able to fix that. Can I skull mine from... Yeah, this is bullshit, but let's do this. I'm actually risking her too much now, I think. Because there's still one more pulled. That I might not have triggered here. Oh, yeah. Crap. Uh, we do get this, which is going to be a minor cache of enemy intel. Oh, crap. Feedback damage. Okay, that's not good. So we take a little bit of damage. Oh, crap. Oh, Jesus Christ, Mina. Okay, I didn't expect that to happen. This isn't good. Does Overwatch count as an action? I'm really wondering now if Overwatch counts as an action. Um, Gertrude is in trouble. Gertrude might actually die. 
And I'm sad to say that I probably don't really care about Gertrude at some point. Ah, yeah, she she reacts. She definitely, yeah. Gertrude is unconscious. But it's better than having something else happen. Gertrude has all her actions done already. So I think I'm just going to put Sarah on Overwatch. There we go. We got one Overwatch shot, which is probably going to miss. Yeah, oh, it's even... It, was, it wasn't a miss. Hardly did anything. Then that Viper is in a better position to do something annoying as well, probably. Poison. Poison. Uh, which means that I'm going to do... Oh, we missed on that shield as well. I'm going to do Restoration next. Which is annoying. Oh, Stasis. Can I do anything about Stasis? Probably not. I don't think Restoration is going to change all of that. Okay. I think I still have an Acid Bomb. Not that the Acid Bomb is going to do much. And of course we need to reload. I do have an Auto Loader on Erica. But she sees nothing from here. First things first. I'm going to put Erica on a kill zone through this entire area. So that should go through the door. Like that. Kill zone. So that sh should get us shots on everything that tries to move. Now... I don't think flashbangs are going to work on alien rulers. So that is kind of sad. And the alien ruler over there... Does take a bit of damage if I manage to hit. I'm going to have to try. It's one of our best shots at the moment without moving. And we do get a hit. So he's going to try and escape now probably. Or not. So he moves closer. He moves closer. Well, that might have been a fatal mistake then, because if I get just a little bit of extra damage on this bomb, then we're going to be fine. Come on. Come on. Kill that snake. Yep, I got the trophy for it already. Kind of spoiled it, but there we go. Five damage. Alien ruler down. Okay. The king is down. Good work, people. It's over. It is over. That is who. Um, next up. I'm going to do restoration in the next turn. Because I need to get it closer anyway. Who else do we have left, by the way? Oh, crap. That's it. Do I risk Sarah's life? Ah, oh, the Viper isn't going to kill her. Yeah, I am. I'm going to skull mine the priest. Oh, I can't get the loot. That is annoying. But skull mine the priest. Sarah has so much health, I'm not even worried. Uh, and she's immune. There we go. I've rarely seen that fail, by the way. But we got a small intel. Oh no, another bit of feedback damage. God damn it. We've been really unlucky with the hacks today. But at least the priest is down. Stays is ended, and the Viper is just going to fire, I suppose. Oh, no. Oh, that's even... Bound. Bound is not too bad. I can deal with Bound. The alien transmission is still active, and we're running out of time. Get to the relay and take it out. ASAP. And we're taking poison. Emily is no longer poison, but of course the poison cloud is still there. I just need to get somebody in a flanking position to take out that Viper. Am I glad that that spider is... Uh, spider. Viper is dead. So yeah, we take poison damage if you try to get out of here. Um, Jacqueline as well, by the way. I'm wondering, if I flash that Viper... What happens? Although I have a 70% shot. Might as well do that. 70%? There we go. There it goes. Um, is, is Sarah alive? Because she's... Sarah is no longer bound. Okay. Now. Um, Sarah, can you put yourself like right out in the open somewhere over here? So you can see everybody. Um, and now you can use restoration. Flies to each squad member. Healing or reviving them as needed. That is what it's supposed to do, right? 
Um, let's move them all in inside a little bit. I know, I know, no, I know, she's poisoned. I need to put them out of the cloud anyway, so let's do that. And then use restoration. I don't know why it only shows us one target, but restoration. So does that fly to everybody? So that heals me, fine. There we go. That's what I wanted to see you do, little gremlin. Heal Sarah, uh, Emily with a little bit of poison healing. And then Jacqueline gets a little bit of healing. Then Elisabetta gets rid of her poison and her damage. Oh, and there we go. Let's revive uh, Gertrude as well. Because she was kind of snaked. Is she... Hello? Is she, is she fine? Is she... Yeah, she's waking up. There we go. And remove the poison and damage from Elisabetta herself. And now we can just blow up that transmission thingy. Then we can just blow up that transmission thing. So fire once. And then I think I might actually let, let Gertrude finish this. There we go. Status confirmed. All hostels are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Definitely not flawless, but we get ourselves uh, a Viper King. And there we go. Back at the Avenger. Home sweet home, and I'll probably have to put an, an engineer in the uh, the healing center. Because, uh, yeah, this, this doesn't look good, is it? But we do get three promotions, which is really, really nice. Exactly what we wanted on this mission. So Gertrude gets... Um, I might actually... How is her hacking stat? Not that great, actually. Um, let's start with medical protocol and move further from there. Then Erica... Erica Crawford gets Steady Hands or Aim. Um, if you did not move last turn, gain plus 10 Aim or 10 Critical Chance. And Hunker Dan now confers 20% Aim to the first shot on the following turn. Now I'm going to go for Steady Hands. There we go, because our Sniper usually stays put. And now we can promote Elisabetta as well. And she's going to get Demolition 2. There we go. Commander. And then we got Having successfully recovered one of Dr. Ballin's genetically course. modified test subjects. I am eager to begin conducting an autopsy as soon as possible. It is my hope that by following her own research notes, I will gain an even greater understanding of just how she managed to accomplish these rapid changes. There we go, the Viper King Corpse. Among the host of genetic modifications undertaken by Dr. Valen while experimenting on this creature, the outright change in gender is perhaps the most glaring. There is also the question of the ice it seems to produce in place of venom. Uh, so that is, it looks really cool with the, the green glow and everything. And then the corpses of everything else we killed. Although clearly reminiscent of the known viper species we encounter with some regularity, the specimen is unique for a number of reasons, not the least of which is its gender, this being the only male viper ever reported. It may be possible to repurpose some facet of its biology for use in our own armor development programs. Hello. That sounds good, and we counter the return fire, which is of course a reward in its own, and 106 intel. There we go. So I'm guessing that gives us a new research opportunity. I'm not going to do that just yet. What I am going to do... Oh no, I did put an engineer in the infirmary already. I still have one extra engineer, probably. I'm just checking. Um, is there somebody else I need to remove traits from? No. Healing is perfect. Uh, so I don't think I really need to spend that last engineer on something in particular. So let's just keep him open. So we get intel over there, but we were building a radio relay. Um, so over there, I'm just gonna... Uh, I would have wanted to go to the, uh, the the black market because of our immense intel right now. But uh, yeah, I forgot the black market is still gone to ground. So I don't have that just yet. Um, building radio relay then. And then we get a covert action done. Uh, hacking increased, cohesion increased, and a bit of XP, and we get two more Illyrium cores, which is exactly what I wanted. So there we go, I'm gonna go for the ability points this time with Jessica and Paula. I need to be careful, because of course, we're in a bit of trouble at the moment. <laughs> Most of our people are wounded or tired, so I'm hoping I don't get a mission in the next two days. Because I would be boned otherwise, uh, which gives me the idea. I should probably head to the armory. 
and uh, recruit a few more people. Because this list has... Ooh, look at that. Elizabeth Davis, a uh, Canadian trooper. A new Valkyrie? I think we're going to go with her. There we go. Now we got Molly Hall. Mo Molly looks like exactly the same as... This is confusing. We also have Kate Ryan. Alice... Get ooh, there's a lot of people who want to join up now. There we go. Jiang Li Cheng. Let's get her as well. And then maybe someone from... Um, Japan, so Miyu Tanaka. I'll get her as well. So three new rookies. Fine, fine, fine. We should be able to uh, handle the next mission now without a problem. And we get an experimental powered weapon complete. The Shredstorm Cannon, a more aggressive variant of the Shredder gun. The Shredstorm Cannon fires razor sharp particles in a cone to devastate close proximity targets. And that is one of my favorite heavy weapons, by the way, because I've used that in my previous playthrough, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm also going to um, level up one of our new rookies. I kind of forgot about that. So let's put a soldier in here. Uh, let's put Elizabeth Davis in as a ranger. There we go. And I'll leave the two other rookies to just in case we finally get training to change somebody in a Templar, for example. Or a skirmisher, that would be nice. But for now, I don't even have the option to uh, recruit another skirmisher, which I would have done in the COVID actions if I could. And there we go. The radar relay has been created and now we can make contact easily. Uh, we also get the bonus pursuit of knowledge, which is basically useless because we don't have any labor laboratories. But we can now finally move to Asia. So let's make contact over there. That is still instant. So the 40 intel we can use in that. Looks a bit more snowy over there. Which makes sense because technically we're in uh, Russia at the moment. We've established That's that. With the local resistance forces in this region, Commander. West Asia. We're ready to move on the coordinates we pulled from the Codex. And there we go. So now we have access to that Codex mission which also reduces Avatar Project Pro's progress. So that's really good. We can go to the new Arctic. And that's basically it. Which is Good, I think if I because we almost made contact with every region which is really cool where is Asia so we need to make two relays in Asia as well anyway uh, I won't be able to make one over here so let's just make contact with the next region as well so that costs 80 intel now because we don't have a radio relay but let's do that now as well there we go 85 supplies from the new Arctic and uh, we could go to East Asia. We could even do that because I think it's 120. It just multiplies every time. But that is not too much of a problem. We'll make a, a radio relay over here first. Um, but for now, this is actually really good. Two more extra regions contacted, uh, which allows us in five days to get more supplies. So we have a monthly income of 500 supplies right now, which is really, really good. But of course, we lack the supplies, so we need to start scanning somewhere else. Uh, and I actually don't see anything on the map at the moment. Ah, wait, intel over here, life signs. Nothing else on the map then. That's all there is to it, okay. Okay, let's just let's just grab that intel then. The plan, by the way, is to scan at this location until right before our supply drop. During the most recent covert action, but word from the medical team is they'll all be fine. So Jessica got injured in that mission, which is not that much of a problem. We didn't get a promotion, sadly, but we do get 17 ability points. Let's assign a new covert action. Uh, if I calculated it correctly, I think we need one more resistance contact. So I think this one is going to be fine. And we're going to send Elisabetta and Lisbeth on this mission. Lisbeth will get the two aim, which is always nice for a sniper, uh, for a sharpshooter. And then we gave them uh, 25 supplies to negate the risk of getting a soldier captured. There we go. That's four more days away. So what was I saying? Yeah, we want to scan to right before the supply drop. And then I think it's high time we take care of the Warlock. Because the Warlock might get to this next intel level. I do want to keep him as weak as possible when we attack him. So that's just scan. So right before... The aliens continue to make the lives oh. of my followers difficult. But with your help... This mission may prove less dangerous. So we get another message from the Templars. We get an engineer and intel from this mission, but... Ooh, so we have Spectre, Archon, Elite Trooper, Elite Shield Bearer and Officer, which is not that much of a problem, but the enemy unknown is more of a problem. 
that's probably gonna be uh what's it called is that is, is it called the gatekeeper the big sphere thing um yeah we don't really have a, a choice here that extra engineer is going to be nice although i don't really know what to do with that extra engineer now that we have the workshops but uh who knows we might get a, another uh another use for that engineer so i'm not gonna take our best people um, reason for that is we want to take our best people on the next mission. So I'll remove... Do I remove Elena? I think I should. Because her damage output is so big that I shouldn't probably uh, focus on her. So let's see what we can do here. And there we go. Customize the look of our Valkyries a bit as well. So Jacqueline in bright and army green. Erica in gold, Emily in black and orange, Marina still in her lovely green, Cal uh, Hilda still in her lovely red, and then we turn Kelly into a, well, a bit of a combination of red and white, which suits her healing role. So this is going to be the team for next time on Operation Rotting Key, where we're going to recover a resistance operative. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you in the next episode of XCOM 2 The Valkyrie Playthrough. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.